Hi friends, it's Shari. Today I am visiting one of my other favorite stories, Alice in Wonderland, to create this really fun platform pop-up card using lots of different stamp sets. So for this card, I'm going to be using Gleeful Gardens for mushrooms, snails, and grass. I'm also using O oh Gnome for some more mushrooms. I'm going to be using Bicycle Built for Two for the little girl. This is going to be Alice. I'm using Fairy Friends for some of the flowers to create a garden. And I'm using Bugs and Kisses just for that little caterpillar right there. And then some bunny. I'm using this little guy and I'm going to modify him with some drawing to make my white rabbit. And then I'm going to use this clock from this Plan On It appointment set and I'm going to be creating that into a pocket watch. So I've already stamped out all my images in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink so that I can do some Copic coloring. But before I do that, I want to add my detail to kind of change these images up. So I'm just using a Copic multi-liner pen and I'm adding a little bow tie and a little jacket to my rabbit. So all the things I'm drawing are within the shape of the rabbit so I can use the coordinating die cut to cut it out. I'm also adding little sleeves so it looks like his jacket has arms so I just added some lines where his hands are. And then for the pocket watch I'm going to add a little piece on the top to make it look like a pocket watch and then I'm using the circle that the stamp stamped out as my outermost circle. I'm going to use a really thin multi-liner and trace another circle on the inside so I have that frame of the watch. And you could actually stop here, but what I did was I went in with this really thin line of this pin and drew some little tick marks where the numbers would be just to make it look even more like a watch. Okay, now to move on to some coloring. I'm starting out with Alice and coloring in her blonde hair. I did color it a little lighter with my first coat of yellow, so I'm going in with a darker one, and then I'll pull in an even darker one to add a little bit of shading. It's very, very subtle. Now, I didn't draw my details on her dress just yet. She has a blue dress with a white apron over top. So I'm just drawing in that apron and then the apron ties that go back around to the back of her dress. So I'll pull in some blue markers for her dress and I'll just start with my base color and then I'll just add the slightest bit of shading kind of around the edges of her apron, under her chin, and on the edges of the dress. Now I do usually like to color white things with a gray or a brown, but I thought that leaving the apron white would stand out just enough, especially because she has a skin tone next to it. So I'm coloring in her face and her arms with a pale E00 and an E02 for some shading. Now when you look Alice up online for pictures, she has white tights on, but I thought it looked a little bit funny to leave her legs white. So I did color those in with a very pale skin tone for her as well. Now for my white rabbit, when you look up images of him online for the Disney movie, he's wearing a red jacket. But I also found pictures of him wearing a blue jacket. And I just thought that that looked a lot better for the colors and the look that I wanted on my card. So I'm coloring in his jacket blue. I will bring in some red on his bow tie here in just a little bit, but since he's white and I don't want him to be just bleached out white, I'm going in with a very pale warm gray and giving him just a coat of a light gray all over. And then I can go in with a slightly darker one and add a little bit of shadows. I'll also add a little bit of detailing with my pink marker. So of course I'm going to color in the insides of his ears with that pink marker, but also give him some rosy cheeks and a little pink nose. And then of course here is his bow tie that is nice bright and red and stands out. And then I'm leaving his shirt white, just like I left Alice's apron white. 
Now for the pocket watch, I'm just tracing the frame with a yellow, and then I'm gonna pull in a really pale blue for the glass. And I did speed up my coloring a lot in this video so that it wasn't too terribly long. Now to move on to all of my garden elements. So on this card, it's the part of the story where Alice is really small and she is in the garden with all the very large flowers and mushrooms. So that is why I have these elements picked out for my card. So I've colored that big grass from Gleeful Gardens. And then this mushroom that I'm coloring here in the pink and red colors, this is going to be the mushroom that Alice is sitting on. I've also got this really fun flower from Fairy Friends. And I'm coloring that one in some pinks. Now I did plan out this card ahead of time to kind of know which images were going near which images. So I know that that pink flower with the three bell-shaped flowers is going to go near Alice. So that's why I colored it pink because I know it's going to stand out next to her yellow hair and her blue dress. Now this big mushroom here, it's going to go in the background and that little caterpillar that I colored is going to go on top of it. So I don't have a huge caterpillar like in this story, but since I'm putting this on my background piece, he's going to look like he's far away. And of course he does sit on top of that mushroom nicely, so he looks like he's kind of big in the background. I did color my snails about four times to get the colors I wanted. So the colors you see on my snails right now are not the colors of the snails that I ended up using in the end. Now I do have some more elements I pulled in. I pulled in a teacup and some bottles and then this top hat from Hats Off To You that I'm going to make into the Mad Hatter's hat by drawing in the little ticket that's in the ribbon on his hat. And these elements, I know they don't fit with the garden part of this, but these are going to be kind of on the front of the platform pop-up. It just helps kind of pull in more elements from the story and tell the tell that I'm trying to tell. So I'm using the green for the Mad Hatter's hat, of course, and then his hat has a dark green ribbon on it. I did pull up Google Images a lot to remind myself of the proper colors for some of these elements. And you can see those two snails there at the bottom. Those are the two snails I do end up using. So I didn't show all my coloring. I also colored the bottles and the teacup. You'll see me add those to the card here towards the end. But the little pocket watch I did have to fussy cut because I don't have a die for that one. Now to start on the platform pop-up part of the card. So I'm using the new Gotta Have Gingham Rainbow. This is the Dorothy paper. This is that blue checkered. I thought this went really well with kind of the colors and the theme of Alice in Wonderland. Now I'm also cutting some Watercolor Wishes green paper and I'm just cutting that top piece. So the platform part because I want it to look like grass. I don't want it to be gingham in the garden. So I've just cut a strip of this and I'm just going to cut that piece that is solid here, the piece that has the slot. So I've cut two of those and they're going to go on the top of my platform. So I will show you here in just a bit how I modify those to go on top of the platform. We're going to trim off some of the pieces. I also have two strips here. I'm going to go ahead and cut strip of grass. I'm going to cut two of them. They're going to go around the outside of the box along the bottom. So these are cut to six inches long, which is a little bit longer than I need, but I'll just trim off the excess. I'd rather have too much and trim it off than for it to be too short and I have a gap at the end. So I'm just going to line up my grassy border and I'm actually going to just stack these two pieces together and cut them at the same time. And that way I know that they're both exactly the same height and it'll be consistent around my box. So I ran that through my die cut machine. Now I have two identical pieces of grass to decorate around the outside of my box. But before I put those on my box, I want to also cut down these two trapezoid shaped pieces that I made. So I'm just trimming along the score line that the die creates. And if it's hard to see, I just folded it and that helps me see it a little bit better. So this makes the shape 
just the part that's going to be flat when my box is popped up. So I've got that little slit and this is going to line up perfectly on top. And I'm just going to use liquid glue so I can kind of shift it around and get that slot lined up and the edges lined up perfectly. And I will repeat this with the second piece as well. So the same thing on both pieces that are cut for the box. I'm also going to go ahead and add my grass to each of these. I'm just using a dot adhesive runner so that I can kind of run it across the top of those blades of grass and get a little bit of adhesive up there as well. And then I'll just use my adhesive eraser to get rid of any adhesive that might have stuck between the grass blades. Now I can fold it on those score lines and then of course you can see how it's a little bit longer and I'll just use my scissors to trim off that excess. So I'll repeat the same thing on the other piece so I have two pieces that look the same with the grass around the box and the grass on top. Now I can put some double sided adhesive tape on my tabs where these two pieces are going to stick together. I also cut the little grass pieces that go on the tabs inside out of that same watercolor wishes paper. So all the grass colors are going to look the same. And then I cut the little T-shaped pieces. I'm using three of those. I've cut that out of some 110 pound white cardstock so that they're nice and sturdy and will hold up. I'm using that thin double sided tape just to put a piece all the way across the top of that T on that really skinny area. This is where my grass is going to go. And then I thought I wanted my grass to not be quite as tall as what the die cuts. So I'm just going to draw myself a guideline to make sure I don't cut it too short. And then I'm going to cut all three pieces at the same time because they don't have to be exactly perfect. So I'm going to stack those together, hold them together with a really small binder clip, and then just trim it off with my scissors. I just didn't want things to get lost in that tall grass. I wanted my flowers and my mushrooms to stand up above the grass a lot more. So I'm going to go ahead and put these pieces of grass on each of these T-shaped tabs. So I'm just pulling off that liner paper and then I'll just line up the grass. Now I did decide that after this first one I thought it was easier to lay the T down on the grass. So this is the back side and it's just easier to see the bottom part of that T and line it up. So I am going to assemble my little scenes on each of these T pieces before I put them in the box because for me, it just works better that way. But when you assemble these, if it's easier to put the pieces on when the box is assembled, you do what's easiest for you. So I'm folding those down on two of them and then I'm gonna cut the tab off on the third one, which is going to be the center. And now I can start to assemble my pieces. I'm starting with my scene that is on my center tab, which is going to have Alice sitting on her mushroom and then the pink flowers on the far left side. So I'm going to glue those as far left as I can. And then I will put Alice right in front of that. Now I was going to actually put that snail that you see there, but I left him off because I wasn't sure if he would get hidden by what's going to be on the layer in front. Um, and once I got those things assembled, I decided he was hidden a little bit too much. So I actually didn't use him at all, sadly. I'll have to use him on a different project. So that's my middle piece. Now I'm moving on to the piece in front of it. So I just like to kind of lay my pieces together so I can sort of see you know, where things are gonna fall in front of each other. So on this one, I have two little mushrooms and a flower and then that little snail. And I, I did use him. I only left off the big snail. <laughs> I guess I could add him to the back of the box now that I think about it. But I'm adding my two mushrooms to the far right side. I'll add my little snail in front. And then that tulip is going to pop up behind them to give it some height. 
Now I do like to kind of stagger my little scenes so that things are not one right behind each other, which is why I do this by looking at each piece and how it lines up with the one behind it. Now for the piece on the back, I have that big tall mushroom. For the grass, I'm actually gonna glue it to the back side of the die cut grass. So it's kind of hidden back there. And then of course, my little caterpillar is going to go on top of my mushroom. Now I did end up adding some pieces to this layer once I got it in the box and could kind of see how full it looked. So now I can start to assemble my box now that I have my little scenes kind of created. So this is the one on the front. I've already pulled off the liner paper on the adhesive that's on that little tab. So I've got that in the slot. I'm going to fold that little tab under, make sure it's nice and straight. So this is going to stick to the bottom of the box. And then I can pull off the liner paper on that other tab and it will stick to the front of the box. So there is the first piece. And then I'm doing the same thing for the second piece. This one, of course, is going to be facing the other direction because it's the back of the box. But I'm sticking that little tab down to the bottom, pulling the liner paper off the big tab, and I'll fold it over to where it all connects. Now I did decide to go ahead and embellish with some glitter before I completely assembled my box so that I could put it all on flat. And I'm using a combination of some Stardust stickles on the flowers and then also some of these sparkle glaze from Lawn Fawn. I feel like the sparkle glaze kind of gives it a little bit of dimension and so I use that on the dots on my mushrooms. So they're kind of glossy and stand up a little bit and then the stickles was just on the flowers and the snail shell. Once the glitter has dried I'm going to complete my assembly of my card. And I'm putting the pieces on the front of the box first. So I've got my white rabbit with his pocket watch. He's going to go right on the front panel here. And then I've also got some of those little bottles. And then that little, it's a tea tag from the tea bags in the tea set. But I thought it worked perfectly on the little bottles from Perfectly Wicked. Because it's that little tag that says drink me. So obviously I'm not going to write drink me on it. It's way too tiny for that, but it gives that illusion that that tag is on there. I've also got my Mad Hatter's hat that I'll add to the side here. And then of course to complete the tea party look, I've got my cup of tea that goes with the Mad Hatter's hat. So I'm putting these things on the front because they don't really go with the garden that's sort of on the inside of the box. But again, I feel like they complete the story. Now I'm also going to go ahead and add my middle piece. I've got some double-sided adhesive on the back of this T. I'll just line that up in the center and you can see why I cut the tab off the bottom because I don't need it. And then I'm going to add some double-sided adhesive all across this kind of rectangular flat area so that it all sticks together and stays assembled. So before I put that big flat area together, I'm going to do the two tabs that start to create the outside of the box. I'm using my grid mat as a guide to make sure I have things nice and straight. So I'll adhere that one tab down. Then I can pull off that liner paper for these pieces in the center. You could also use liquid glue if you wanted. And then I'll also pull off the liner paper on the second tab. And I'll line up the two rectangular pieces. Make sure they're nice and stuck down. And then fold in that second tab to complete the box. So you can see now how you get that green on the top where it would have been the gingham if I hadn't covered it. So here's where I'm trying to figure out where to use my other snail. I decided he was too big and he just took away from things. I do have that little tiny bottle that I thought would look really good in Alice's hand because her hands are kind of out like she should be holding something. So I'm using that bottle and I have another one of those little tags. And I'll just add that to my bottle. 
And then I do like when the back piece is a little bit taller. So I'm going to add some pieces to it as well. I do have that one pink little mushroom I haven't used. And I felt like the back area needed a pop of pink as well because the other two had it. And you can see why I like to assemble things flat. Um, it's kind of hard to get your fingers in there sometimes and add these little things. But then, like I said, I wanted it a little bit taller, so I'm using that one yellow flower that I hadn't used yet, and I'm gonna glue it to the back of the grass. So it kind of looks like the grass is the leaves of the flower. And that gives it some nice height in the back. And here is that finished card. And I just love the way it turned out. It was so much fun to come up with the images to use and make this cute little garden and alter the images to make Alice and the white rabbit. So here's another close-up look at that card. I just love how it turned out. So fun and colorful. Thanks so much for joining me today. Have an amazing day. Bye.